G'day and welcome back to this, the third episode of my build of this Phobus style studio camera stand. As you can see it's coming along nicely. I had a question last week about what this recycled hydraulic start button from the old Maho controller, what that gets used for here. And I'm using it to do the, the tool release. Previously I had a button over here. And it used to be just a momentary switch, you, you had to hold it down during the tool release and as soon as you put, take your, took your finger off, it, uh, it, it retracted the um, tool up inside. Now I've put a toggle onto that so it doesn't matter whether I push the button here or on the control panel. It can, one, uh, one push kicks out the tool and the next push draws it back in. So we'll put the strain in. My touch off tool. Now that I've finally got some replacement aluminium, it's time to have another shot at this plate, which will mount the cross slide. Have you guys been watching that America's Cup yachting out of Auckland? Man, those foiling mono hulls are absolutely mental, aren't they? Unbelievable racing. I feel a bit sorry for the American team, but I guess that's what happens when you put a Kiwi skipper on your boat. I think I've got everything set up and ready to start. I've got my feed rate turned back to zero. I've got a 25-50-75 block to check the tool approach. Thumb on the feed override button as it comes down. So tool's coming down, slowing it down. Feed hold. Go to distance to go mode. I've got 100 millimeters to go. This is a good technique, huh? Wish I'd learned this way before. It's come down to 50 millimeters above. Right now it thinks it should be at X107. That looks about right. I've now got air to blow chips away. So I think we can start this program. Right, ready for the first tool change. So next tool is the spot drill, tool number. Oh, wait a minute. Whoop, cancel that. I haven't harmonized my tool table in the CAM software with the tools I'm using. So it's asking for tool number one, when actually I'm prepared to use tool number three. So I need to go through and edit that and repost it. 20 minutes later.
Now the second setup, cut the slots and the ends. Now the next part I need to make goes on this back side, closes off the center portion here. It's going to have a hole right through the middle for this to be mounted and it'll push onto a brake pad. Okay, that part went pretty well. hole through here to mount the eye bolt which will then take the cable and take the weight of the whole cross slide assembly. These eccentric nuts here are used to adjust the tension on the wheels to get them to grip in the slot nicely. I've just adjusted them and they roll absolutely beautifully. Has a nice grip, there's a bit of resistance. I let go of it. It does go down but just at a very nice smooth rate. There's no slot whatsoever in it.
as you can imagine, by this stage, with all of the uh, interlocking features and all of the screws, this becomes m mega over constrained. So, a little bit of persuasion to go together, I think. All right, this just feels awesome. I'm tempted just to duct tape the camera to the end of it and start using it as it is, because this is awesome. <laughs> As you can see, my basement's a bit like Hobbitville with extremely low doorways. I'm gonna to have to lower the pulley down to get through the doorways, so that'll mean I'll need to cut a slot. Blunt drill. I've had quite a lot of problems with uh, the fluorescent lighting in this basement uh, causing flicker on my videos, like this. Because my B camera can only do 30 frames a second, I try and keep the A camera running at the same frame rate. I thought this could only really be addressed through a change in frame rate, but it was pointed out to me that if I change the shutter speed from a 60th to a 50th, it also goes away. So thanks very much for that. I've reset the, the custom settings so that every time I turn the camera on, it should automatically now default to no flicker. I guess this needs to go on first, huh? Bright idea didn't work. I was kind of hoping to check the length. Well, it's still not quite tight. I really don't know how to get it any tighter than that.
The next part is this brake pad, which just locks the vertical slide. This is setup one. And this is the other side. Well, that didn't last long. That was a new end mill. Well, it was from one of those cheap sets with 10, 8, 6 and 5 millimeter with four flute and two flute in the set. One minute, 37 seconds later. I've swapped it out now for a Holex three flute quality end mill. So this is the finished brake pad. I'll put some of this felt on the bottom. It's like the stuff you put on the bottom of chairs to stop it scratching the wooden floor. I'm going to need a threaded bush to make this brake work. Here we go, a five minute job that actually took five minutes. You can see how the brake goes together. This screws through, that bushing is staked onto the thread, so it turns with the thread. And this just slips over the top and gets pushed by that bushing. I started making this bracket for the tripod head in episode 2, so it's about time I finish it now. Okay, now the last thing I need for basic usability is to mount this tripod head. I'm not sure if this is going to be the final bracket. It's uh, not the prettiest thing I've ever made, but we'll get good enough to get started. At the moment I'm just using some nuts. I need to make up some proper tea nuts to go in there. Perfect for getting those kind of direct overhead shots. Awesome. In terms of stability, I can go right out to max overhang, which is about a meter and a half, without it tipping. It looks like the calculation was correct. Could probably put another three or four kilograms on here. I'm not sure if I really need it to be one and a half meters long. 
I'll leave it like this for now. I can always cut it shorter if I find I'm not using it. Well, I was hoping to get it finished this week, but I still need to make the cover over the back of the rollers. I still need to make up the T-nuts to more securely hold the head. I need a cover on this front part, and I also need a break on the cross slide. Well, it looks like this is going to be a trilogy in four parts after all. Thanks a lot for watching, and look forward to seeing you again.